Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the financial advice that many people were giving during the 2020 boom period. MetaZoo, these are videos that are dated. You can read the title of the video, you can look at the thumbnail of the video, and you know that they are going to be very positive to MetaZoo. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I sometimes feel, and I think this is correct, that when things hit the fan, when people run out of money, then we have a very, very, dis we have a very, very different discussion available as to why did this person give this piece of advice? Why did they not give another piece of advice? You know, there is a lot of interesting people in MetaZoo, some of them quite successful in their own fields. Uh, and to be attracted to this, it's the, it's like the story. So now, it's like when Pico Trade or the monthly Magic Box died, I had the opportunity to really review it because I was on the ground floor of seeing it fall apart. And there were a lot of warning signs. There were a lot of warning signs here. But one of the interesting things is people ignored these warning signs and made made these videos that told you that MetaZoo was indeed an investment opportunity. Wasn't an investment opportunity. For many people, it was an investment nightmare. It was something that they probably don't ever want to think about. It lost money. People lost money. People lost millions, if not tens of millions, if not according to MetaZoo itself, they sold $50 million of product. That product... $50 million in MetaZoo back then is probably closer to $5 million, maybe less today. That means at least $45 million of, and that's assuming that they weren't selling the product for above the MSRP, which people definitely were. When you got booster boxes going for $820, yeah, the S&P 500 as of this recording is in, it's Monday. It fell 3.7%. It's dropping like crazy. And people saying, hey, man, we everyone got to get out of the market. Get out of the market. Uh, it's Bidenomics at its best, right? We're still under the Bidenomics reg regiment, right? Whatever you think about it, he's still our president. And the impacts of his decisions are now being felt, right? Four years. They always think, oh, it's the next president. Well, we're at the end tail of that. But back to uh, the financial advice. A lot of these people are not business owners. They don't own stores. They're just, you know, they're buying a box or two and then they're going on YouTube and giving financial advice on, hey, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy this. But they don't really know or have that much skin in the game or have a business or have stocks or have any of this stuff. So they're playing in a field where I think they are giving, I don't want to say it's like bad advice, but it's not smart advice. And it's 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 one of those things that if I told you about, which I did, the vitriol I would get two years from now, which two years ago, which I did tell you guys that this was not an investment opportunity, would be is much, much higher than today because today there's just not that many people who care about it, A, and then people are, are able to see the truth that this too that this was sold to you as an investment opportunity. And this is the saddest part. When you need money the most, which would be probably right now, you, you can't liquidate this stuff. It's very, very hard to liquidate. And that would be my overall concern on this type of stuff is you're being sold a dream and the dream is turning into a nightmare. And that nightmare... There's not much you can do to get out of that nightmare. You're just kind of stuck holding this stuff and hoping even the biggest investor we can imagine, Alpha Investment, is said he's stuck holding a million dollars. So if that guy with all the volume he does and all the, you know, even towards the end, he was pumping out his own promo cards that he himself drew. If he can't get rid of the stuff, I don't know how you are going to get rid of the stuff. That would be a big big concern as the stock market goes down as things are getting really 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 bad for everybody how are you going to get out of your position 
for a stock, you can just sell it. You just click a button and sell it if you feel too uncomfortable with the way things are going. But for a meta zoo thing, what is the volume, the liquidity? Out of all these investment videos, I only saw one video mention liquidity. And that's the key to this whole thing is how liquid is it to sell and given the volume. There's $50 million of this product out there and it all wants to move at the same time. Is there really that many people who are willing to pay for it uh, at any price, even if the price is much lower? And are you okay with fire selling the price much lower? It's an interesting example of when things shit hits the fan, right? It's a very interesting example of that because without MetaZoo, we wouldn't have MetaZoo is the only card game that failed, rip mass that grew massively and failed. Flesh and Blood is still going. It's Monarch First Edition didn't turn out to be what it was promised to be, but it's still going. And the other games are still going, like Archive and other game, other verse, like other games, smaller games are still going because they didn't expand as rapidly as MetaZoo did. MetaZoo is the big one, right, that collapsed. Uh, even even recently, they were still making videos on Netflix about how great MetaZoo was and how the price was going to go forever. Just be careful. Always make your own advice. Uh, always, always make your own decisions based on your own research. You can't listen. If, if one thing is very clear, you cannot listen to people who are biased online and these were not a good investment. These will never be a good investment long term. I know a lot of people think that it could go up in money. I, I'm invested in many dead card games. A problem you have is liquidity. Yes, everyone's going to buy, list it, buy it now for 10 times the price of what it actually could sell for an auction. But as soon as it goes to auction, there's like maybe one or two people buying, bidding on it. And then they buy it and then they put it on, <laughs> buy it now for a huge price. It just doesn't work. You can't sit on this stuff forever, right? You're not going to be buried with this stuff, hopefully. A lot of people giving a lot of investment advice, very few pieces of investment advice for MetaZoo. Concerning MetaZoo, uh, turned out to be, it, it, it did not turn out to be well. It, it did not go well for MetaZoo. And that's why I can very confidently make this video today because it did go to bankruptcy court. It didn't pay the it didn't refund or pay many pre-orders. It didn't pay or re or I guess didn't even refund the emissions on the players. That to me is a failed card game. That to me is the definition of a scam. That's how I feel about it. You might feel differently, but um, most people are going to feel the same way because. When that happens to a local game store, you know the pen the penalty of a local game store not fulfilling pre-orders is bankruptcy. The penalty for a convention not being able to pay out its winners is bankruptcy. MetaZoo is destined for success. This is a year ago, so he should have understood that things were not going to go. Let haters hate. Well, it turned out they weren't haters, right? They were right all along. <laughs> 